the teaching demo for the cardiovascular lab. This lab's pretty straightforward. We start off with an introduction uh, talking about how we're continuing to look at uh, the characteristics of organisms, and today we're going to look at the cardiovascular system. Now, in, we're going to go a little bit of history here uh, for the introduction. Uh, back in, you know, history, the individuals didn't, didn't understand how our blood flows. And in fact, um, uh, individuals thought that the blood was used up at the extremities, and then you know, your heart would produce blood, and the blood would be pumped out to your extremities, and it would get used up, and you'd just continually be pumping, uh, creating new, um, new blood. And somebody questioned this, thought, you know, that doesn't sound very uh, logical to me, and questioned it. And his name was Harvey, William Harvey. So William Harvey questioned this because looking at dissections, um, so you have, you know, your, your heart. If your heart, okay, if your right ventricle holds two ounces of blood, okay, and your heart, uh, so your heart pumps two ounces uh, at a time, and if your heart beats 72 mi uh, beats per minute, so two ounces times 72 beats per minute times 60, okay, that would be 8,640 ounces, or that would be 540 pounds per hour. So you would have to be generating, making five, an average person, 540 pounds of blood per hour. And so Harvey's like, no, I don't think that this can't be right. Something's got to be different here. Um, and how many of you have ever donated blood? Okay, who's ever donated blood? How do you feel after you donate blood? Okay, sick, tired, you know, I don't have any energy, you got to sit down, you got to rest. You know, you feel wiped out, you feel exhausted. And they've only taken out like a pint, okay, a pint. Um, so, imagine if you had to generate 540 pounds of blood per hour. So, you know, that's, that is not logical. And, you know, poor Harvey, he had to be careful because um, one guy back in history proposed that, no, I don't think that the blood is, you know, was pumped. I, if, I think his name was Bruno, I think was his name. And, uh, uh, and he actually proposed, no, I think the blood circulates. And he was burned as a stake as a, her as a heretic. So, you know, but, but history's pretty rough when you, when you think about that, when you don't go with what society says. Uh, so Harvey, what Harvey did is Harvey thought, you know, this, isn't, this doesn't seem logical. I think the blood circulates. And he proposed that uh, because, you know, doing dissections on uh, animals and corpses, because uh, that's how they learned is they dissected dead people. Um, and also uh, looking at uh, blood flow in animals, he proposed that I think the blood actually circulates throughout the body and returns back to the heart and gets pumped back out to the body. And he did this really cool experiment, okay? So you could do this experiment too at home. All you need to do is buy some garlic. And so if you, you know, whoever falls asleep at a slumber party first or whoever uh, passes out <laughs> first at a party, <laughs> You know, people do things to them as they're, they're asleep. Hey, you can try this too. Uh, but what Harvey did, okay, is Harvey took garlic, okay? And we all know eat garlic, you got to have garlic breath, right? All right. So what Harvey did is he had a volunteer lay down, okay, and lay down in room one. And there was a, a, a wall separating room one from room two. And there were these pretty cool, there were these holes that the volunteer uh, stuck their feet in. Okay, so they were laying down on a table and their feet were sticking out through the wall in room two. And they sealed, okay, they sealed up around the legs so there was no airflow between room one and room two. Okay, so they were separated. So then what um, uh, Harvey had a volunteer over here take garlic cloves and rub them on the soles of the volunteer's bare feet, okay? So here's this person over here. He had the fun job, or she, of taking the garlic and rubbing it on the feet, okay? Then you have the lucky uh, 
volunteer over here who, I know I'm wonderful, okay, wonderful at drawing here. Okay, next here. Okay. So this volunteer over here had the lucky job of leaning over the test suspect's face to smell. Okay, because Harvey proposed that the liquid, the oils from the garlic that cause it to stink would get absorbed into, through the skin of the soles of the feet, into the bloodstream. And then those would be carried, okay, because the blood circulates, so those would be carried to the heart, which then goes to the cardio, you know, the lungs, so all that going on there. And then, so you could smell the garlic, okay, coming from the breath of the volunteer that was laying down, okay? And so that was what he proposed uh, to test that the blood circulates. So that was the experiment that he did, and lo and behold, yep, the uh, person smelled garlic on the volunteer that had their the garlic rubbed on their feet, okay? So that along, that experiment provided data that the blood circulates along with dissections and watching blood flow uh, as well uh, as uh, that type of data. So we know now that the blood flows throughout the body. It doesn't get used up at the extremities, but it does circulate. It flows uh, through the body, okay? So that's just a little bit of history there. And today, we're going to focus on two questions, okay, two questions. And the, uh, the questions are, what factors affect heart rate? And then we're going to address at the end, what mechanisms or mechanism or mechanisms might exist to regulate heart rate, okay? Uh, so what factors might affect um, heart rate? And uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, before we start listing these factors down, what we want to do is we want to collect some data. Uh, so what I'd like you guys to do is I would like you to um, find your resting heart rate, which is your heart rate at rest. Just sitting here, your heart rate at rest. Okay, you're not inserting yourself, so just sitting. And so you know, have your partner help you do it. And there's two ways you can do it. You can the easiest way is to just take your your two fingers here and to find your pulse, okay, right up uh, here where the carotid, okay, the carotid artery is, okay, and you can feel that. Or you could also do it uh, two fingers uh, here, okay, on your wrist. Uh, if you use your thumb, uh, your thumb, you know, you, you can also, you might get a misread because if you're taking uh, somebody, if somebody else is taking your pulse this way, they might be feeling their actual pulse, so it's better to use two fingers, okay. So take your resting heart rate for a minute, okay, so count your beats per minute, and then do it three times and average it, okay, and why would we want to average it? Okay, gives us a more accurate reading if we average it, so maybe you miscounted or something the first time. And then uh, over on the board, um, you can have it on the side board, the front board, or the back board, wherever. But I'd like you to go ahead and record your average resting heart rate, okay? So I have the graph here. I have um, heart rate beats per minute on the x-axis, and then we have the number of people. We'll count the number of people um, in the class at that, uh, at that one, okay? So go ahead and do that. It should take about two, three minutes to do that, okay? So go ahead and have them do that and put that graph on the board, okay? Have them graph it. And hopefully, it's going to look like normal distribution, hopefully. Um, uh, and so after they get that data on the board, uh, they go, okay, so here's uh, our resting heart rate. And so it should look like, I'll, I'll write it here since the video camera is right here. Okay. So we should have, um, you know, what, I would start at, I don't know, 60. Maybe go 65, 70, 75. Uh, I don't think anybody will be at 80, but maybe, maybe go down to 50. 